I don't want to set the world on fire. I just want to start a flame in your heart. In my heart, I have but one desire. And that one is you, no other will do. I've lost all ambition for worldly acclaim. I just want to be the one you love. And with your admission that you feel the same, I'll have reached the goal I'm dreaming of being War. War never changes. Since the dawn of humankind, when our ancestors first discovered the killing power of rock and bone, blood has been spilled in the name of everything from God to justice to simple psychotic rage. In the year 2077, after millennia of armed conflict, the destructive nature of man could sustain itself no longer. The world was plunged into an abyss of nuclear fire and radiation. But it was not, as some had predicted, the end of the world. Instead, the apocalypse was simply the prologue to another bloody chapter of human history. For man had succeeded in destroying the world. But war, war never changes. In the early days, thousands were spared the horrors of the Holocaust by taking refuge in enormous underground shelters known as vaults. But when they emerged, they had only the hell of the wastes to greet them. All except those in Vault 101. For on that fateful day, when fire rained from the sky, the giant steel door of Vault 101 slid closed and never reopened. It was here you were born. It is here you will die. Because in Vault 101, no one ever enters, and no one ever leaves. Let's see, are you a boy or a girl? A girl? A girl! We've got a daughter, Catherine. A beautiful, healthy baby girl. Oh. Oh, James. We did it. Oh, daughter. Oh, our beautiful daughter. You've got a bright future ahead of you, sweetie. I'm sure of it. Look at you. Look at you. Hi there. I'm your daddy, sweetheart. Daddy. You're going to need a name, aren't you? 
Your mother and I have been talking. What do you think about... That's a good name, don't you think? Fits you perfectly. Looks like they've finished the gene projection. Let's see what you'll look like when you're all grown up. You're going to look a lot like your dad. See that, Catherine? Oh, oh, beautiful. Just like her daddy. <laughs> it's a big world out there, honey, full of all sorts of people. What about you? What kind of person are you going to be? J You're James? just a... Catherine? James? Catherine! She's in cardiac are... arrest. Start compressions. James. Get the baby out of here. Move! Move! One, one thousand. Two, one thousand. Come on. Hang on, Catherine. Hang on. Okay? You want to... We need a doctor, not a dead man. This one's on the house. Fail to meet my expectations no. and there will be no James and Chili Chatter. Hey, your fortune right. 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 Just feel something you can just like down here. Come on over here, sweetie. Come on. Walk to daddy. Mama. Come to daddy. There you go. My goodness, just a year old and already walking like a pro. Your mother would have been so proud. Listen, kiddo, I know you don't like it when daddy leaves you alone, but I need you to take care of yourself for a minute. You just stay here while daddy runs to his office. You'll be okay, honey. I'll be back in a bit. Mama? Quite the little explorer, aren't you? Serves me right for trying to pin you in. Come on over here. I want to show you something. See that? It was your mother's favorite passage. It's from the Bible. Revelation 21.6. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. She always loved that. All right, come on. Let's go see if your little friend Amada wants to play. These experiments Don't be a damn fool. The experiment to prepare. We prepare to survive. Surprise! Surprise! Stanley, you turned the lights on too fast. You blinded the poor kid. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday! Happy birthday! Can you believe it? She is growing up so fast. Happy birthday, honey. I can't believe you're already ten. I'm so proud of you. If only you. Congratulations, mother... young lady. I don't have to tell you how special this day is, do I? Down here in Vault 101, when you turn ten, well... You're ready to take on your first official vault responsibilities. So here you are. As overseer, I hereby present to you your very own Pip-Boy 3000. Get used to it. You'll be getting your first work assignment tomorrow. <laughs> Enjoy your party. You're only ten once, so have fun. Oh man, you got a Pip-Boy. I wish I was ten. Happy birthday! We really surprised you, didn't we? <laughs> Your dad was afraid you were on to us. But I told him not to worry. You're so easy to fool. Is this it? Or hasn't the real party started yet? Shut up! And it isn't my fault that Butch and Wally are here. Your dad said we had to invite them. You didn't fool me. I just pretended not to know. You're such a liar. Great party, Amada. Thanks for doing this for me. You're welcome. But really, your dad did most of it. I just help with the decorations and stuff. Hey, I bet you can't guess what I got you for your birthday. Go on, guess. Just give me the present already. Okay, okay. Is One it, um, a date with Freddy Gomez? 
gross. I didn't think you even liked boys. Especially not Freddy the Freak. Yuck. I guess maybe I should give this to someone else. Someone who'd rather curl up with Grognak the Barbarian than Freddy Gomez. The question is, how could you tell the difference? <laughs> oh, I really have no idea what it is, Amada. Ha! I knew I'd surprise you. Who's your favorite barbarian? That's right, Grognak. Issue 14. And with no missing pages. I found this in a box of my father's old things. Believe it or not. Imagine him reading comic books. I guess everybody was ten once. Well... I better let you get back to mingling with your guests. We'll talk later, okay? Happy birthday. Amada walks off to enjoy the party, and we can begin to explore a little bit. We see a billboard nearby with a rotating sign directly above it. Nice Achieve perfection, exercise regularly, cleanliness is godliness. America lives on in you. Seek the sunshine of friendship. Much more like that. On the billboard, we learn more about life in Vault 101. Lost. One copy of Dean's Electronics. If found, please return to Stanley. Wednesday night is bingo night in the diner. First prize, a week's supply of water rations. How nice. If anyone wants a tarot card reading, you know where to find me. Beatrice. Enter the annual Vault 101 Bake Off. Bunt cakes only. Wow, things move a mile a minute here in Vault 101. Sitting at the bar nearby is Officer Gomez. Hey, you having a nice time? Happy birthday, Missy. Nice of him to come by. We find most of the party goers sitting at nearby benches. We can walk by to talk with some of the other kids. Hey, happy birthday, nosebleed. <laughs> hey there, butt breath. <laughs> nice pit boy. What is that? One of the 3000 A models? What a piece of junk. I think you have to wind it up every morning. Just because I came to your party doesn't mean I have to talk to you. Look, Butch, I don't think her puny arm is strong enough to lift that pip boy. Thanks for inviting me to your party. Hey, uh, thanks for inviting me. Really cool party and everything. I know that, uh, Butch and I give you a hard time, but you don't take that seriously, right? Anyway, uh, happy birthday and everything. I better get back to, you know. What? Is she your best friend now? Hey, Wally, I think Paul's in love. Buzz off. Yeah, Paul. Why don't you introduce us to your new girlfriend? Who do you mean, dork face here? Happy birthday, dork face. <laughs> this party's pretty good, I guess. For a little kid. Balloons, party hats. Not as cool as my party, though. Remember how my dad got Andy to do magic tricks? And we all played Hunt the Mutant in the atrium? Oh, right. You weren't invited to my party. Too bad, man. It was really fun. <laughs> my mom Good made one, me come to your stupid button. party. Don't expect <laughs> me to hang out with you. Get lost, loser. Well, good to know I've got friends. Opening up our pit point to see if it is indeed working, we find that it is. Using it, we can read the copy of Grognak the Barbarian that Amada gave us, increasing our melee by one. Well, that's enough talking with these charming people. Moving to the other side, we can talk with some of the adults. Perhaps they'll prove to be better company. I hope you appreciate the effort Amata put into this party. She really seems to like you, for some reason. For some reason? Okay. Well, at least the overseer came to my party. Looks like this is Amata's father. Of course Amata likes me. Everybody does. Hmm, that's not what I hear. But perhaps she'll set a good example for you. There's still plenty of time for you to make something of yourself. Really? What exactly do you hear, Overseer? Amada did a great job with this party, but couldn't you have helped out a little bit more? I do not allow the fact that Amata is my daughter to compromise my position as Overseer. I gave her all the appropriate paternal encouragement, of course, but I could not contribute extra vault resources. That is simply what my position requires. No more, no less. I know Amata understands that perfectly well. Great. Even the adults are nice. With great trepidation, we can talk to nearby old Lady Palmer. Are you having a nice party? Ten years old. My, my, my. Seems like only yesterday that your daddy came. Goodness, listen to me ramble. You're waiting for your present, aren't you? I hope you brought me something better than last year. Uh, well, now... 
Young people were more polite back in my day, respected their elders. Of course, we had a real overseer back then, worthy of respect. Not like that one over there with his rules and his secrets. Why, I have half a mind to just up and tell you. <sighs> oh my, there I go again with my old lady talk, and you still waiting patiently for your present. I suppose you could have asked more politely, but it is still your birthday. So here you go, a nice sweet roll I baked just for you. Oh, you didn't have to bring me a present, Mrs. Palmer. Fiddlesticks! What ten-year-old doesn't like presents? I was ten once, believe it or not. My goodness, the vault was practically crowded back then. Not like today. So few young people now. But here I am rambling on again, and you listening so politely. I'd love to see my present, yes ma'am. Such a nice, polite young lady you are. Don't ever lose your gift to speaking your mind so directly. We could use more of that down here. Here you go, a nice sweet roll that I baked for you just this morning. And it's all for you. You're the birthday girl. No sharing required today. Mmm, a sweet roll. But before we can eat it... Attention, everyone. It's time to cut the cake. Andy, wait. What's off, kids? I didn't bring you a present. That's what you're wondering. Oh, no. I am mortified about the cake mishap. I'm hungry, and that stupid robot destroyed the cake. Give me that sweet roll you got from old lady Palmer. But Mrs. Palmer said I didn't have to share, since it's my birthday. Mrs. Palmer said I didn't have to share. Who's talking about sharing, moron? I want the whole thing. Now are you going to give me that sweet roll, or am I going to have to give you a knuckle sandwich? Uh, well, how about we share it? Half for me, half for you. That's fair, right? How about we share it? What are you, five? Give me that sweet roll, I'm gonna pound you. Oh, you want it? Okay. Sure, Butch. Gah, I don't want your nerd cooties. You're gonna be sorry you did that. We'll see how tough you are later when the grown-ups aren't around. Or we can give in and say, you can have it. I don't even like sweet rolls. Yeah, right. Thanks, loser. Oh, and happy birthday. <laughs> if we do, Amada takes us aside. What happened with Butch? He looked awfully pleased with himself, which usually means something bad happened to somebody. I don't want to talk about it. I know. Butch. What else is there to say, right? Hey, forget him. Have fun. It's your birthday party. He, um, he made me give him my sweet roll. God, what a jerk. I hate him. You'd think he'd be happy he actually got invited to your party. I'm sorry, are you going to be okay? Let's try to just have fun and forget about Butch for a while. He wanted my sweet roll, but I told him off. Wow, you're so tough. You'll have to teach me how to do that sometime. He's not worth worrying about anyway. Most likely to end up a trash burner, right? Or instead of giving him our sweet roll, we can stand up for ourselves. Go soak your head, Butch. I'm not giving you my sweet roll. Oh, yeah? We'll see about that. Or we can say, you do look hungry. What? Your mom drank up all the ration coupons again? Don't you talk about my mom, you little punk. Well, that butch attacks us. I told you not to act all official. You should have just joking, given me the But I'm not sure anyone else did. Nonsense. Butch, what are you doing? Always Hitting a girl and on her birthday, for heaven's sake. If we chose this option... What's Butch's problem, anyway? I can't believe he tried to start a fight at your own birthday party. What a jerk. He's just lucky Gomez stopped the fight before I really hurt him. Right. That's exactly what I was thinking. The jerk tried to steal my sweet roll. God, he really is a butthead. Oh well. You can always count on Butch to make an ass of himself. Get it? <laughs> Your dad's the overseer. Can't you talk to him about Butch? Come on, don't ask me that. You know he would if I asked, but where would that leave me? It's bad enough being the overseer's daughter. If everyone knew I ran to daddy every time I had a problem, nobody would ever talk to me again. We'll think of some way to get Butch back, I promise, but I'm not getting my father involved. It was kind of my fault. You know how easy it is to make Butch mad. You never learn, do you? You can't help shooting your mouth off even when you know it's gonna get you a bloody nose. Uh-oh. 
Your dad is giving me a look. I better let everybody else have a turn with the birthday girl. We'll talk later, okay? After the fight, Gomez comes to check up on us. I hope Butch didn't hurt you. You want to tell me what that was all about? Really, I was the one who started it. It wasn't his fault. Really? Well, if you say so, I'll stay out of it if that's the way you want it. But let me give you some advice. Stay away from Butch. He's nothing but trouble. He tried to take my birthday present. Why, that little... I figured it was him that started it. He's been nothing but trouble since the day he was born. You let me handle this and try to stay out of the way. Look you at know, him. Right, Butch. Butch. Well, that Gomez takes Butch aside and gives him a lecture. But during this scene, many of the characters talk over each other, making it hard to hear what he says. Or we can say, don't worry about it, sir. It was nothing. Good for you. Don't let Butch start to bully you or he'll never stop. I've seen his type before. He's going to be a handful in a few years if his mother doesn't take him in hand. Well, no harm done then. Why don't you get back to enjoying your party? Well, this birthday party sure has told us about the quality of people here in Vault 101. Let's see if we can be, hopefully, pleasantly surprised by talking with nearby Stanley. He appears to be in the festive mood, wearing a party hat and all. How do you like that there Pip-Boy, miss? Fit all right and everything? Wally said my Pip-Boy was a piece of junk. Don't you listen to him. The A-Series may be a bit heavier than the luxury models, but they were built to last. Solid as a vault they are, and I fixed her up myself. Shouldn't need to open her up again for a decade or two. I hate it. How do I get it off? Get it off? Why in the world would you want to do that? Your Pip-Boy's the best friend you'll ever have. Besides, you can't get it off. Biometric seals, etc. I could tell you some stories about trying to take them off the old folks. Ah, well, that's hardly a fit subject for a kid's birthday party. Don't worry, you'll get used to it. Pretty soon you'll wonder how you ever got along without it. Oh, so you can't take it off. Wow, it really is different from other Pip-Boys. Well, it's all right, Stanley. Seems kind of old, though. Of course it is, just like everybody else's. They don't make them anymore now, do they? That one I've been saving just for you, though. The A-Series is a bit heavier than some of the fancier models, but it won't let you down. I bet you could drop a bomb on one, and it would still work. As a matter of fact, I know you could. It's really cool. Did you fix it up for me? As a matter of fact, I did. I'm glad you like it. Some may think the A-Series is a bit basic, but I've always preferred them for their reliability. <sighs> no, that's... that's really interesting. Sure, most people don't give a thought to their Pip-Boy as long as it keeps working. Sure, whatever. Did you bring me anything for my birthday? Here I am going on about your Pip-Boy, and I clean forgot about your present. Here you go. Happy birthday. It's not much, but I hope you like it. Thanks, Stanley. Don't mention it. He gives us a kid's baseball cap. We'll put it on in a minute. First, we'll talk with our father, sitting at the counter next to Stanley. Are you all right? Is Butch giving you a hard time again? Actually, I was the one who started it. It's easy to make him mad. Please, don't do that. I know you don't like Butch, but if you start picking fights with him, how are you any better? Don't be afraid to stand up for yourself, but don't go looking for trouble. There's trouble enough in this world without adding to it. He tried to take the sweet roll Mrs. Palmer gave me. I wish we didn't have to invite him, but there just aren't that many children your age in the vault. In any case, you'll have to learn to deal with bullies. The world is full of people much worse than Butch, I'm afraid. Don't worry, Dad. I can handle Butch. I'm glad to hear it. Once you start letting bullies push you around, you'll never see the end of it. Come on now. I bet there's someone else out there with a present for you. As I said, trying to pick out the conversations during this portion of the game is difficult, since they all talk over each other, but here are some of the side conversations I was able to capture. Do you think we surprised her? I'm sure of it, Amata. Never suspected a thing. Now go on and enjoy yourself. How's it going, sweetheart? Thanks for coming, Stanley. I know you were busy with the water purifier. Everything's fine, I hope. Oh, sure, nothing to worry about. Me and Andy got her all fixed up again last night. Good as new. I wasn't Maybe. worried. The vault rats. You can fix you anything, like right? Anyway, you and your I'm glad you can make it. You should try it sometime, Allow Daddy. Allow me to wish you a My happy pumpkin. birthday. I would offer you a piece of cake, but... Uh... Daddy, I told you not to act all official. I know you were joking, but I'm not sure anyone else did. Nonsense. People always enjoy my little speeches. Besides, that friend of yours could use a reminder that life is not all fun and games. Ugh, this is supposed to be a party, so, you know? what do you think we should huh? call our gang? 
You should try it sometime, killer. Daddy. You might like hey, it. How about the we can loot more of the party hats on the nearby table. And we can equip them. It looks like all the others. And we can equip the kid's baseball cap Stanley gave us. A simple red cap. After a while, our father walks to the nearby intercom. He got a message from a man named Jonas telling him that the surprise is ready. Hey, that was Jonas on the intercom. He and I have been cooking up a little surprise present. Jonas is waiting for you downstairs on the reactor level. Go ahead. I don't think anyone will mind if you slip out for a few minutes. All right, a surprise. Let's go down to the reactor level. As we head out, we bump into Beatrice. Happy birthday, dearie. My goodness, I hope I didn't miss the party. Yes. Can I have my present now? Of course you can, dearie. There's no need to get impatient. I've got your present right here. Why are you talking to me like I'm five? Oh, you are so funny. Ten years old, of course you are. Why, you have your Pip-Boy and everything. Yeah, my dad and Amata threw a great party, didn't they? They sure did. My, my. Ten years old already? Why, I can remember helping your dad change your diapers. And now look at you, a great big grown-up ten-year-old with your very own Pip-Boy. Since this was such a special occasion, do you know what I did? I wrote you a poem, just for you. I hope you like it. A poem? You've got to be kidding me. No, really. I wrote it just for you. I'd never just copy one of my old poems. Well, there was that one Founder's Day where I couldn't rhyme anything with overseer. But you deserve nothing less than a brand new poem. You can keep it in your Pip-Boy and read it whenever you want. Um, thanks, I guess. Did you get me anything else? Don't be silly. One poem per birthday, that's my rule. <laughs> if I gave you two, think how jealous Butch would be. <laughs> Thank you. I will treasure it always. Is that all? Of course. Run along now, dearie, and have yourself a wonderful birthday. With that, she gives us a birthday poem. We find it in the notes section of our inventory. Gray walls, impenetrable steel, suffocation, condemnation, little hands groping in subterranean uncertainty. Mommy? Daddy? Am I dead? Nay, nay, reborn to purifying fluorescence. A face emerges, strong and male. Father to me, father to all. Overseeing our lives, our eternities. Harshness of discipline. Harshness of love. Obedience, my savior. Larva to pupa, pupa to worker. Buzz, buzz. One with the steel honeycomb. Ten lies within 101 significant at last. Till gray sweeps from walls to hair to soul. Then eternal slumber, the sweet sleep of incineration. Wow. Looking forward to a life here. After talking with Beatrice, we notice the overseer leave. I'm glad to be here. I think it's important to keep in touch with the young people, you know, as part of my job. Plus, well, Maybe I like parties. Rats. You guys like that? Uh, sure thing, Officer Gomez. Well, it's been nice chatting with you. Thanks again for coming. If we follow him, he takes the nearby stairs to the upper level. At the top of the stairs, we can overhear a conversation. Enjoy the party, sir? Bah! I only showed up because Amata's friends with the brat. Give them a few more minutes, and then I want that place cleaned up and everybody back to work. Sure thing, sir. Harshness of love, indeed. But we need to find this Jonas. Heading back down the stairs, we can follow the sign towards the reactor level. At the bottom of the stairs, we go through a door and pass a reactor to find Jonas. What are you doing down here, young lady? I thought kids weren't allowed down on the reactor level. Oh, but Dad told me it was okay to come down here. Hey, relax. I was just teasing. Listen, now that you're ten, you don't have to take guff like that from grown-ups anymore. Got it? <laughs> Hold on one more minute. I think your dad will want to give you the surprise himself. Can it, Jonas? Where's my surprise present already? Oh, I see. Now that you're ten, you're all business. Well then, Missy, we'd better get to it. Happy birthday, by the way. Hang on one more minute. I think I hear someone coming. I'm not a kid. I'm ten years old. <laughs> you sure are. Pip-boy and everything. Look at that. 
If you can wait just one more minute, I think your dad will want to give you the surprise himself. With that, we wait for Father to come walking through the door. Are you ready for your surprise? I don't like surprises. Since when? Regardless, I think you'll like this one. You're getting older, and you've got your pit boy. I figure you're old enough for this, too. What kind of surprise? The Overseer gave you your pit boy, and you're old enough to do some work, so I figure you're old enough for this. Your own BB gun. It's a little old, but it should work perfectly. Jonas found it down here. It was in pretty rough shape. Took us a good three months to find the parts to get it working again. You know how tough it is to find a spring that small? Good thing Butch misplaced that switchblade of his. <laughs> so, what do you think? Want to give it a try? All right, what do I get to kill? Easy now. It's only a BB gun, but it's not a toy. Let's go try it out. Jonas and I have found a nice spot for you. Follow me. Here? We can't shoot a gun here. We sure can't, unless we want the overseer beating down our door. Jonas and I have found a place, though. Come on. Father walks by and opens the nearby door. Following him inside, we find a sealed-off reactor door to the right, but he stops by some nearby shipping crates. Well, what do you think? You can come down here and shoot anytime you want. I didn't want a stupid BB gun for my birthday. I'm sorry you feel that way. Maybe you haven't grown up as much as I thought. If you don't want it, I'm sure I can find someone who does. Thanks, Dad. You're welcome, sweetie. Happy birthday. This is so great! Thanks! Couldn't have done it without Jonas's help. You make sure to thank him. All right, let's go find Jonas to thank him. He walks in behind us. Happy birthday, darling. I hope you have fun with it. I guess so. I'm just not that into shooting things. Oh, hey, don't worry about it. You might be surprised how much fun you can have if you give it a chance, though. Couldn't you get me a real gun? A BB gun is kind of lame. Maybe so. But you still better not let the Overseer see you carrying that around. That's a real gun, as far as he's concerned. Thanks a lot, Jonas. This is really cool. Hey, you don't turn ten every day. Now go on and let me see you shoot something. All right. Now to develop some marksmanship skills. Heading to the nearby crate on the ground, we see three targets set out for us. After equipping the BB gun, we can take them down. Careful, it's a rad roach. Think you can take care of that with your BB gun? Just aim and shoot. You'll be fine. Easy breezy. Good work. That's one less rad roach to deal with. Let's get a picture together. Capture the moment. Hey, Jonas. Get a picture of me with a big game hunter. Smile! This is in girls. Different parts. And with that, we get teleported six years into the future. But we're out of time. We'll continue with the Lone Wanderer's childhood at Vault 101 in tomorrow's video. If you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you feel like you're still missing notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I manually update Twitter with every new piece of content that I publish. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes and in a wide array of colors. They come on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with the next episode. I think you made her cry, Butch. <laughs> Little baby gonna to cry. Get lost, loser! I Why think you, you made her cry, Butch. <laughs> Your little friend little baby mine. gonna cry. No girls allowed. Buzz off. Yeah, tell you to stop bothering us. Balls. Shut Leave up, us alone. dork. Enjoy yourself. Happy birthday, Missy. <laughs>